Before conducting a PHA, it is very important to walk through the PNIDs as a group and identify important process parameters. Let's join the HAZOP team as they walk through the PNIDs for an FCC unit. All right, before we jump into the PHA worksheet, let's walk through the drawings and get some process parameters, starting at the inlet. The feed to the unit is vacuum gas oil with a flow rate into the reactor controlled to around 20,000 barrels per day. It enters the reactor around 210 to 230 degrees Celsius. Do we have any information on the pumps that feed the unit? The feed pumps normally discharge around 1,200 kPAG, but can generate up to 1,550 kPAG when deadheaded. Why do we need to know the pump discharge pressure when it's deadheaded? It doesn't normally operate that way. When we get into the HAZOP and come across a scenario that blocks the discharge of the pump, we need to know how high the pressure can get and if it is credible to overpressure any equipment exposed to that pressure. All the piping here is designed above that 1550 kPAG, so there shouldn't be a concern for overpressure with these pumps. Okay, the feed enters the reactor standpipe and mixes with the lift gas and catalyst. What are the process parameters for the lift gas? The lift gas is 1034 kPAG saturated steam. The pressure protection on that system is 1,250 kPAG. Okay, what about the reactor? The reactor operates at a pressure of around 22 PSIG, or 150 kPAG. The temperature of the vapors leaving the reactor is around 510 degrees Celsius. The catalyst exits the reactor through the spent slide valve, which maintains the catalyst level above the valve to maintain a barrier between the reactor and regenerator. The spent slide valve also has override controls on differential pressure. It is important to maintain around 5 PSIG, or 35 kPAG, of differential pressure across the valve. Why do we need to maintain the differential pressure? It's required to keep the catalyst circulating in the system and to prevent misdirecting oxygen from the regenerator into the reactor. Okay, let's have a look at the combustion air supply to the regenerator. The blower operates on back pressure from the regenerator, which operates around 28 PSIG, or 190 kPAG. Temperature can vary as it draws air in from the atmosphere at ambient temperature, but after the heat input from the blower, the temperature is between 150 and 200 degrees Celsius. The maximum pressure the blower can generate is around 450 kPAG which is higher than the design pressure of the regenerator. So there is a PSV sized for blocked flow of the discharge, relieving to atmosphere. Okay, what temperature does the regenerator operate at? The regenerator operates around 705 to 760 Celsius. If the temperature gets too high, then the temperature would exceed the design temperature of the regenerator and the flue gas equipment. If the temperature is too low, then combustion may stop or not fully regenerate the catalyst. Excess O2 is also monitored on the flue gas to ensure the catalyst is being regenerated properly. Typically, there's around 1.5% O2 in the flue gas stream to help ensure there is complete combustion in the regenerator. Leaving the regenerator, the catalyst flows through the regen slide valve. Yes, the regen slide valve maintains the catalyst level above the valve to maintain a barrier between the regenerator and the reactor standpipe. The valve controls the reactor vapor temperature. The spent slide valve also has override controls on differential pressure. It is important to maintain around 5 PSIG, or 35 kPAG, of differential pressure across the valve to prevent misdirecting hydrocarbons from the reactor standpipe into the regenerator. Okay, I think we have most of what we need to get started on the reactor and regenerator. I would like to save some time by getting the process parameters for the fractionator ahead of time. What details do we need? I'll grab the pump operating curve so we can check the maximum discharge pressure of the pumps. I'll check with the control room to see what the normal discharge pressures are for those pumps. We will also want to know the overhead operating pressure of the fractionator tower. Do we need to know any information about the temperatures in the tower? Yes, we will need to know the temperature of the streams exiting the fractionator tower, as well as the temperature of streams leaving any of the coolers or heat exchangers in the system. 
It will also be good to know the flow rates of the product and the recycle streams on the tower, as they're important for both the level and temperature control of the tower. Great. After the break, we can get started on the HAZOP. In the next video, we will join the HAZOP team as they take a look at a few of the common hazardous scenarios associated with the FCC reactor operations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our online Process Hazard Analysis Certification course. The course includes a year of email support and covers topics including HAZOP, LOPA, and SIL.